Goosebumps is rated Y7 because it may be too spooky for kids under seven. So the Squid Jib Boys came back finally. It's kind of funny too. I mean, I got comfy with Paparina and well, they came back finally. I mean, damn, finally. I mean, my goodness. It seems like it's going to be a good challenge, even though um, David Popovich, the bookworm, actually did it within one month. I'm pretty sure, like, in one month or two months, he was able to do all 30, 62 books of Goosebumps. Not a slam against them, but I'm just saying, I kind of want to actually try to do it myself, where it's like, yeah, I get a bunch of friends and we do the Goosebumps book and see if we can actually do it within a year, you know, just be able to actually do all 62 books within a freaking year. That would be interesting. That would be freaking interesting if I can actually pull that off. Maybe, but of course, on the other hand, you know, got to get all those books and track those down. So <laughs> that's the interesting part. Anyways, Dave returned, and well, the good news is that I remember, and I don't even have to watch the episode, because I'm pretty sure I know everything that happens in the episode, and because since I do have the other spinoff version of this with Pop Arena, I technically, I'm like, I'm just gonna remember it straight off the bat, and then... The one that's going to happen with, like, what, in a year? I'm pretty sure Paparina is going to take a freaking year to get to this point. I will actually will watch the actual thing because, well, not to be a jerk, but he kind of does, like, a little better job in this. <laughs> it's like, oh, you bastard. Oh, you bastard. If they see this, they're going to kick your ass. And, like, yep, yeah, I'm pretty sure they might. I, I'm pretty sure they might. But, number one, um... I don't know about one of them, but one of them's about to get married. And I think the other one has a girlfriend. And I think another one has a girlfriend. Plus, he has a bar, too. So, it's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're now completely busy now. That they can't really kick my ass. Because they're too damn busy with their wife, their bar, and I think girlfriend. So, we're good. <laughs> Anyways, what they said is that they got Timmy Swanson and Jimmy and Jenny Swanson along with Amazo. So... It took a little about a while to actually get there, but now we start where he's like, Timmy actually wish he actually has a magician name. They are playing along with it, and he has a friend named Foster. Oh, yeah, we get right here is where we get here. Amateur magician. Here's where the book really starts. So it started with a magic show with friends at school. In the freaking episode, of course, they don't have the money for that. They don't have the money for children. I mean, uh, come on. They don't have the money for the children. I'm sorry, but the magic show is not going to happen. So since the magic show is not going to happen, they just go straight into the freaking store. That's what happened in the episode. So Jenny actually ruins the magic show in the actual book. But, of course, Jenny actually shows up later because, well, they don't go, they don't show the school. Heck, the school is not even freaking damn shown. And, well, it makes sense because the school only mentioned and seen once in this whole entire book. That's about it, you know? So, anyways, Tim and Foster goes to the magic shop. It looks like they go there once a week and don't buy anything. The owner actually mentions that. And it's kind of, in the episode, I don't think they even mention that either, do they? Well, that's something to check out in the other version of this. <laughs> so, let's see. The owner says you can't buy anything this time, like usual. And he's like, oh, $2.50 trick. No, it's $250. That was in the episode. The owner gives two free tickets to Amazo. And it's 10 p.m. on a school night. Thanks to Paparina, I'm most likely I'm starting to actually come with this part of where it's like, dude, you know they're kids. And... I'm not sure. Did he give two tickets, meaning one each, or he just gave one ticket to just Timmy, period? Tim, I don't know. And that's one thing I don't know. Plus, it's like 10 p.m. on a school night. You think they're actually going to actually allow that? 
Yes, but it's my dream, Mom and Dad. It's my dream. Well, too bad. And sorry, but no. It's a school night. So he has no choice but to sneak out. Just like in the episode, he sneaks out too. But before he can, Ginny actually reveals, Oh my gosh, where are you going? I'm telling my parents, or telling Mom and Dad, unless I come with. And it's like, how the fuck does this work? He's like, yeah, and I don't know. How exactly can she actually can he actually i think yeah he could freaking do it all he has to do is just tie her up put her in the freaking garage with her mouth taped up and pretty sure she can't do shit <laughs> you're pretty sure she can't do anything so anyway amazo does tricks to get to go to this club so it's actually hosted at a club and the club actually does have a name but i forgot <laughs> it's like yeah because they don't really actually make sure they repeat it so it's like yeah this club well it's, eh, whatever so Maisel does his tricks and he gets to the point of where he needs one volunteer. Apparently he's a black box, but in the TV show it is not a black box at all. <laughs> yes. So anyways, the same exact thing that he gets transported to an AKA a magi magical room. Yeah. And that's the same thing in the book, but differently is that in the book, the door was locked and he actually had to force himself out of it. In the actual episode, you actually did have a butler who opened the door and he was a little bit creepy for a minute and it turns out that he's actually one of those guys from Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yeah, the creepiest one that you could point your finger to. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> it's like, oh, what the freak? It's like, oh, damn, man, that's a burn. <laughs> so he gets to Amazo's dressing room and he's like, dude, what the freak, man? I was locked in there, crab on book version only. Episode version, he got knocked, locked. He got actually got to get out. So Tim actually gets insulted by someone, fearing it might be Amazo. So he takes Amazo's magic in quotations kit. And he goes out into the audience and he finds Jenny, who was waiting for him. In the episode, however, Jenny actually was went backstage as well which is pretty weird it's like why in the world did you just sneaked out it's like what the frick man it's like no one actually cares to actually keep the kid there it's like she's freaking damn little pretty damn sure you guys should keep her right there in the seat and be like so your brother will be coming back shortly you just gotta sit here it's like yeah instead she just already is like in the episodes like what the frick why in the world but of course you know they had to move the freaking story along so they both just gets to go home instead of him actually going in a crowd and be like come on sister we gotta go <laughs> so let's see <clears throat> she's inquisitive about what does he have what he's holding and then eventually they're able to i think it's the next day yeah and he said that too it's like he, she was very inquisitive especially in other ones like what's in it in episodes she's like what is in it it's like i'll show you in the afternoon tomorrow we'll show you tomorrow and apparently yeah so that's one thing messed up about squid chips like i didn't understand that it was the next day when it, this happened so next day or maybe it's actually the same day actually no it doesn't make sense because what i think it might be midnight 1 a.m 2 a.m so it has to be the next day if not then it's like what so they opened the free yeah it had to be next day so it would be cool if they actually said next day though so eventually they went into it and there was instructions in the freaking box or well, in the kit quotations kit so she actually says i'm hungry and then she digs into the freaking trunk instead of going downstairs and getting something to eat and she picks out a carrot and then she actually bit into the carrot two times two bites munch 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 and she turns into the freaking damn rabbit she turns into a rabbit did that happen in the episode? Yes, it sure did. Yes, it sure did. The weird part has to be the fact of there is something different. There's definitely some differences here. Let's try to remember. Um, I think that in the episode, the club is not actually closed forever. Yes, yeah, like apparently the club closed down <laughs> somehow last night. So it's like, huh, I guess maybe losing his box or trunk or kit something 
is something that just went too far where he's like, oh, frick, I can't do anything anymore. Close it down. Close down this whole club, man. We don't sell like alcohol and crap and we can stay open. So, yeah, they just close down the club. <laughs> just just close it down forever because, well, it's gone. <laughs> so, yeah, so it, they were able to go into it. And in the book version, apparently, Foster joined in, too. So in the book version, Kim and Foster went with Jenny the rabbit now to the club while in the episode it was more the fact of Tim and Jenny the rabbit went to the club yeah apparently they couldn't actually give the person who played Foster a little bit more money okay sure frigate mm. excuse me so let's see uh so yeah it turns out in a book version Amazo actually is a wooden dummy, a very good crafted wooden dummy. So, Tim hears a voice, it's coming from the rabbit, and he calls himself Frank the Sorcerer, and it turns out that, I guess, Amazo was jealous of him and turned him into a rabbit. So, Amazo actually is like, yeah, I'm just gonna don a wooden dummy and continue my magic tricks, even though it doesn't make sense. It's like, okay, so, hold on. So... There is an Amazo, or I don't. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, I get it. Frank the Sorcerer. Okay, so Frank the Sorcerer was jealous and turned him to a rabbit. And then Amazo is a rabbit now. And Amazo actually is the rabbit all along. So apparently, I got something crossed when he tried to tell me what was going on in the book. Oh, well, frigate. So Tim actually held up Jenny. And he asked how many bites did she take out of the carrot because he says, yeah, she ate a carrot. Apparently, the spell actually lasts half an hour. So that's good. So Tim actually gives Jenny the bunny to Foster, which, of course, in the episode version, I'm pretty sure she got teleported or something. I'm not sure because in the book version, it makes perfect sense. It's like, oh, so that's what happened. So. His friend Foster took her home. Well, in the episode, did she get transported or some kind of crap? I forgot. But in the episode, it was pretty different. And that's weird. It's like, come on, Squid Chip. Come on, guys. You know, it's pretty different. And they didn't do anything. Yeah, they said, friggin' man. It's like crappy kind of book, crappy episode. And I'm like, what the frick? You, you, you missed everything. Yeah, so in the book, they don't even have Frank the Sorcerer. Frank the Sorcerer is mentioned, but that's it. And then they basically show that Amazo actually is a jerk because Tim actually hung out with Amazo. And Amazo's like, hey, uh, would you like to actually be helpful to me? And he's like, oh, be helpful to you? Oh, golly gee willikers. And well, Tim replaced the dummy. And, and turns out Tim, instead of being the true replacement tim actually is now a rabbit while amazo is human again <laughs> and at least tim is treated well he's being very well treated and there you go you would say it's the dark ending but i think it actually is a somewhat dark ending because well a dark ending would just be what exactly happens in the episode which they they didn't even mention whenever the freaking damn episode the last bit so in the episode, the writers actually decided to change a few things. There is no wooden dummy. Amazo actually is human. And he's not a rabbit. While Frank the Sorcerer is a rabbit. So Frank the Sorcerer is in the episode. And that's where I guess all the money, extra money went to. Even though technically it's like, well, the money would go straight into buying a wooden version of Amazo. And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> Hard to freaking figure out what exactly would the funds go to on this episode. But yeah, they they paid another guy who is Frank the Sorcerer. So Frank the Sorcerer actually was the rabbit, and Amazo was like, Oh my gosh, no. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, he's like, Oh my gosh, no, and he actually helped reverse the spell. And since he reversed the spell, along with Jenny's spell. Amazo and Tim are now rabbits and they're about to have their heads cut off in front of a live studio audience. But of course, 
they're rabbits, so they don't know if they're actually people. So it's not really sure in the episode if holy frick is he about to kill those two so he can not be turned into a rabbit anymore, or is he just using them as props and they're just these prisoners, just like he was a prisoner for Mezo. Man, I mean, you can see that technically the freaking episode is better than the book because the book kind of makes you like a little bit questioning while when it comes to the episode, it's like, holy frick, damn, damn, because they're screwed. They, they're freaking them screwed. They are screwed. There is no way how they can save themselves. And plus, it's like, it's now a big probability of either A, are they getting killed or B is a magic trick. They're just held as freaking hostages. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, the dude after his whole time is now free. So why not just kill them both and just take this as a losing magic show. But of course, since it is truly magic, magic truly actually is a part of this. Not, you know, you know, changing of hands and all that crap. It's like, this is actual magic being used. It means that he could actually kill them both and then bring them back to life and kill them again and bring them back to life. So that means that it could even be even worse than what you think. So I'm like, dang. Like usual, Squid Jib actually missed the pertinent part of this episode. The fact that the episode is completely freaking damn different, especially the ending to the point of where it's like, oh, because dude <laughs> they they could either be freaking damn hostages be killed or be killed brought back to life and killed again and brought back to life and keep on getting that freaking damn scenario until he's rich i guess until he retires and then even then it's like will he even release him again not to mention, what about Tim's freaking parents? It's like, yeah, I I really would like to do a spinoff, but no, that's only for Paparina. Paparina gets to have spinoff videos. This one actually is just being talked, so I'm just going to insert the supposed to be spinoff video in this. And then if I'm able to do it in Paparina, well, there we go. So the spinoff has to be the fact of so, hold on. Tim is now missing, and his parents are doing anything about it. We have no idea when it comes to the episode. Did Jenny actually get to go home? Did she get magically transported? Not sure. And plus, it's like, well, I would figure she would tell, considering, you know, her brother and all. So, it's like, hmm. Will they be able to... It's like, they can't prove anything, but it's like, hmm... But at least with the book version, it's like not only Jenny knows, but Foster knows too. And that means that they both can easily tell him like, yeah, he actually was in the club. You know, he went to this magic club. And I guess what I think the club actually came back to life after he brought. Wait, did he bring back the case? I'm not sure. Did he? It's like, yeah, if he did, then. Yay, I guess. But it is kind of interesting looking at the book and episode version where it's like, wait, the book version is sleight of hand. There's no, I wouldn't say there was no real magic, but, well, you do have the rabbits. You know, you do have the rabbit, but it's like, well, it's kind of like mirror, still like a huh when it comes to it. It's like, well, if it's really magic, then couldn't you actually do I'm human now, but then I turn back to a rabbit. I'm human now, and I turn back to a rabbit. I'm human now, and I turn back to a rabbit. Not to mention the crazy part of Amazo being a freaking jerk bag in the book, but episode-wise, he's not a jerk bag at all. Uh, he's like, I'm protecting the world, and you just screwed us all over. He's like, yes, I turned him to a rabbit for some reason, and now he, oh my god, what the frig we're gonna do? We're, we're trapped now. We're trapped now, man. <laughs> yeah just lots and lots of stuff to talk about on this lots of things missing it really is and that's why i have to make this video have a scary day and have a scary night